Hey everyone, Diogo Marques here, your friend in sales. In today's video, we are going to cover the six main parts of a successful sale. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and click that bell notification below so you can get notified every time that I make new videos like this. Here's how this works. There are two main sides of a sale, you and the prospect. From your end, you need to classify if this person fits a certain criteria. And this criteria is vital in order for you to make a successful sale. There are three main points to this. The first one is he or she must be the alpha. Think about this, that person needs to be a decision maker, someone that can make a decision on the spot, otherwise you're just wasting time. The second one is, he must be able to afford it. Think about this, the guy is a decision maker, but he doesn't have the money, right, you're screwed. So the way to solve this is, either you have financing in place, that means that you can like, of the total price, you can set it up in monthly installments, some sort of vehicle like that, or the dude can actually pay the overall premium, the overall price of the product. So this is really important factor to take in consideration when you are addressing this person, when you are assessing if this person has the financial wherewithal to cover the product price. The third one is they must have a problem. I'll give you an example. When I was selling energy contracts, the whole pitch was change from this carrier to this one because this one is cheaper. But think about it like this. If you are doing a presentation to someone, you already covered that this person is the alpha. He can't afford it because the guy has a job, he has a company, whatever the case might be, the dude has money, right? But then when you look at his situation, you're changing this guy from 10 bucks to nine bucks. And he's like, eh, why would I do that, right? On the other hand, if he has like a high energy utility bill in his restaurant and is paying like 1,000 bucks a month or 2,000 bucks or something like that, and you're going to lower that by 1000 bucks, now he's going to listen, right? You are saving this guy a lot of money. One thing that I've learned is, if they don't have a problem immediately, you can cause them one. And this is important when you are doing a sales presentation, because if the dude is on a product and he, if he doesn't know better, right, you can do stuff in a way that you, either you can improve him to a better plan or make sense in his mind in order to to improve the situation, but you have to cause a problem first. A good example would be if someone has, let's say, life insurance, and the whole policy has like a bunch of stuff embedded in it that doesn't serve the client. So you are ch changing, let's say, from whole life to term, and you are giving better, better pricing, a lot of circumstances that when you are comparing what he has now with the new stuff, it makes more sense. Now he has a pain point, right? He didn't think about it earlier on because he, the guy doesn't know better. Right? It's your job when you are doing a presentation to understand that when you are doing your presentation, you are delivering a service. You are improving people's lives when you are doing your presentation. But these topics, you have to address these. And the way to do that is understanding that, okay, if this guy is the alpha and if he does in fact have the financial wherewithal, but if he doesn't look at it like a problem, right? you're not gonna make it, so you have to cause a problem, right? You're gonna help him, but you need to cause a problem so it makes him, like, makes him do stuff, right? So this is the, the three main key points that you need to address when you are assessing the person that is in front of you. The second part of this is from his end. He is evaluating the situation in three main key components. You, the product, and the company. The first part is you. Who is this guy? Can I trust this guy? Is this guy a figure of authority? Does this guy in fact know what he's talking about? If I call this guy because I need him, will he answer me back? These are all valid concerns and you need to address these when you're doing your presentation. It's like building your case, like to give to, to a point, it's like 10, 10, 10. When you have high marks in each of these main concerns that the client has, he will close. But before that, you need to keep building your case. So when you are in your you part, you need to have this all covered. So have good grooming, have good body language, showing trust, showing trust in a way that you speak, how do you carry yourself, 
the way that you speak, your tonality, how you look people in the eye, like when you address their concerns, you have good answers of for the questions that they ask you, you will see them start deferring to you authority regarding decisions to make in that specific product. Like saying, okay, should I actually do this, dude? Right? They are deferring to you because they start seeing you as a person that they can trust. The second part to this is the product. You need to develop a presentation of your product that is like logic bulletproof case. Doesn't matter what they ask, doesn't matter where they try to poke holes in the, the melon, nothing rotten there. They'll, they won't fight any, they won't find any because it's well built. And the way to do that, and I know you're probably asking this, is like, how can you build the perfect presentation? Well, it doesn't work like that. What you need to do is build the best presentation that you can not today, like immediately, the best thing that you can do right now. And when you start presenting, you'll start hearing objections, common objections, common situations that when you get out of there and say, the last guy actually asked me the same thing. When you come to that realization, what you do is start embedding these in your presentation. So when you go to the next guy, right, you already have discovered. And you keep improving this to a point that you, you start not hearing that objection anymore. And this is a good sign because they don't see any objection there. So this is how you can even eventually build up to a point that your presentation is like pretty solid. It doesn't, a perfection doesn't exist. So you need to start building your presentation, start understanding that every time that you do a presentation under these cer certain same circumstances, people ask you the same stuff. So you start embedding these um, objections in your presentation, right? And you'll start essentially having a clearer path on your way to close the sale because people don't need to ask you that anymore. The last part of this is the company. People need to know that the company can deliver. Think about it. They now trust you. You built the logic bulletproof case regarding your product presentation. So the product fits their needs. They want the product, but now they don't trust the company. You're screwed, right? Because they need to know the company, where, they, where is the headquarters? Do they have employees there? If they call someone, will someone be there to answer them back? If they have a problem, will they send someone there, right? These are all valid concerns. And these come from the company, the carrier that you are presenting. So they need, this needs to be addressed. When I was selling energy contracts, this was one of the main key points that I needed to do because there was this publicly listed company like in, the, in Europe, it's a pretty large company, but they were coming for, to Portugal to essentially be, become a large competitor of the guy that was already here. And this was a really large company that was very well established, like hundreds of years in. So if the new guy comes in, even if it's a billion dollar listed company, it doesn't matter because people don't know about the company, right? So I needed to embed a presentation regarding the company when I was doing my sales pitch because I already knew I was going to get objections, not about me, not about the product, but about the company. They didn't know about the company. When I started doing this, I started noticing a much higher response rate regarding people to sign because I was right. And I was right because I was addressing the trustworthy like, situation that they were seeing regarding me, regarding the product. And I was now starting to address the, the, the company. And when I started seeing trust in the company, seeing themselves like, okay, I will be well taken care of because this is a pretty solid company. They have like shops all around the country. So that's, that's cool. And then they sign. And this is what I wanted for you to have a better understanding. A sale has two parts, you and the other guy, and has three main key components in each side. From your end, you are evaluating if this person is the alpha, if they have the financial wherewithal or you have financing in place. The third one is if they have pain or you need to cause them pain and start having them feel pain so they have to make a decision on the spot regarding what you have to present. From his end, there are three main key components that you need to address. Build credibility up in each of these main key components. You, the product, and the company. This is the main key components of a sale. 
The last tip that I got for you is regarding order, and this is really important. Sometimes when you're doing a sales presentation, you start hearing immediately about the company first. They start asking you questions regarding the company. So you need to adjust. You know that you are addressing three main key points. You just need to realize that these don't have to come necessarily in that order, meaning you, the, com the, the product and the company. Sometimes the guy asks you directly questions regarding who are you, right? So he's testing you for credibility. Sometimes they ask questions immediately about the product. What is the service, like life insurance? It's pretty difficult not to understand what's life insurance, but anyway, it doesn't matter. It's like the product. They need to understand the product first. Sometimes they ask directly about the company. So they already know that it's a, they know the product, they understand the, comp the product, probably were introduced before, so it's like a referral. They now have a degree of trust regarding this person that is in front of him, you but they don't know about the company. So then they need to know about the company first, right? So I, what I wanted for you to realize is that these are the main key points of a successful sale, but you need to readjust sometimes. You need to be a little, show a little flexibility and you have to realize that they have concerns and these concerns will stop the sale. So you need to address these. If you start hearing stuff like, well, I used to have a life insurance agent and he used to work with my dad and he had, they had some problems. When you're having this conversation, think about it. He's not talking about that other dude. He's essentially saying, I don't trust you. So from your end, what you're doing now is, okay, I need to build more credibility points in this specific topic, me. So you show yourself as a, cre as a guy that has credibility. You show yourself as a trustworthy person and you do that by saying like, I have been working like in life insurance like for 15 years, like whatever the case you have, whatever the in whatever industry you're in, you need to have this solid. So when you start hearing things that suggest you that, dude, I don't trust you, right? He's not going to say this bluntly to you. He's going to say this indirectly. So you need to craft your presentation in a way, okay, let's do the me first because the guy doesn't trust me, right? When you do that, you now know that there are two main last ones to cover. So either it's the product or the company. So you start presenting the product because it's the, the sales pitch you're doing there. If you start hearing things about the company, so something like, well, I had some problems with that company in the past, something like that, right? So this is an objection. Or it might be something like, no, I know the company. My, I have my insurance uh, with him, like my car is there. So they trust the company, right? They just ask you about you. You don't trust you yet. So you build your credibility there. Now you are just left with a product. And since you already have some track record regarding presenting your product, because you do this on a day to day basis, you already covered some of the main objections that people usually, usually have when you are doing your presentation. So you make a better assessment regarding where to nail the presentation. I hope this clears it out for you. Remember to uncomplicate things. It's about two human beings that are interacting, you and the other person. From your end, you need to see if this is the person that you can deal with because you are going to use some of your valuable time to make a sale, a potential sale, let's say. And from his end, he is evaluating the situation. People need stuff all the time. People are moving from pain to pleasure. And they only do that if they see that the situation is in favor for them. And the only way for that to happen for them, they need to make sure that they will be in a better position if they make a decision now. So they need to trust you. They need to trust the product that will fit their needs. And they need to trust the company that is going to deliver what is it that you have to offer. So this is what I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you want to learn more, you can go to bwayudigital.com slash book. You'll have a sales presentation there regarding the seven pillars plus the glue, which is a book that took me four years to write. And it covers the main key points for you when you are starting your entrepreneurial endeavors. There, are, there is a framework that is involved in this. There's no secrets here, but you need to cover all bases. You need to know what you're doing so you don't waste valuable time. Lots of valuable advice there, lots of actionable advice there. And it's all about helping you as an entrepreneur make better decisions regarding your entrepreneurial ventures. So until then, peace.